Hello, this is Woody Walton. I'm going to walk you through a quick overview of the Office Deployment Tool for Click to Run. So those of you who are resellers out there wanting to get Office down onto your customers' clients' systems with as little difficulty as possible, this is the tool for you. Now, we're not going to cover everything about it, but just know that we've got great resources here on TechNet. I'll have the links in the blog that discuss the use of this tool in depth. So they've got the overview here, the reference for the configuration file that we'll explore today, and then there are other links on downloading the tools, etc. But if we look at this just um, main overview right here, and we scroll down, you can see that there are actually links to download the 2013 and 16 versions. And it also goes into a little bit of the specifics on how uh, the tool works. It's a command line tool, and it has the properties download, configure, packager, and help. Uh, download is to download the bits locally for local deployment, maybe on a network share. And configure is the most useful. It's the one that we'll spend the most time dealing with, as this directs the the Office deployment tool to an XML-based configuration file that directs how the installation is uh, is conducted. Okay, so I'm going to minimize this and bring up one of our XML configuration files, and I'll bring up this first one here. And you can see, and this may seem a little bit interesting that you can follow the XML here and we're actually going to install a 32-bit version. You can install 32 or 64 and we're installing Office 365 Business Retail and that's actually for Office 365 Business or Business Premium Purchases. And if you look at that documentation on the link that I just showed you, you won't find anything about Office 365 Business SKUs or things like Skype, Skype for Business rather. And and it's a little bit confusing, and so I just want to point out one additional resource that we have to help you out, because we actually have product ID information in a KB article that discusses the different product IDs that are supported in the Office deployment tool for Click to Run. And if we scroll down here, you'll see that, in fact, Office 365 Business Retail and the individual SKUs for Visio and Project Pro, along with SharePoint Designer, are available. And that's not in that TechNet library documentation. If we scroll down to the very bottom, you'll see that we also have product IDs for Link if you're dealing with 13, uh, 2013 product line or in 2016 Skype for Business. And notice the basic version has an option, Skype for Business Entry Retail. And so we'll leverage that as well because those aren't part of a proper Office installation, but we can include them using the Office deployment tool for click, click to Run. Now, if we go back to this XML file, you can see that we're installing the business retail version, 32-bit, and then you can put any language you want, you know, Japanese. In this case, I'm choosing English, and I'm choosing to exclude an application. And if you look at the XML documentation, you can exclude any application within the suite, and then you can also add additional applications. So we're installing the core Office suite. In addition, we're adding Skype for Business Entry Retail, which is that basic version of Skype that comes with or that's available to purchases of Office 365 Business, Office 365 Business Premium. Now, uh, I also have chose to, to add Visio Pro here. So just to show you how this all wraps up. Now, we do have a parameter where we can choose to hide this from the end user. So none of the UI comes up and, and, and shows them the installation. So we can do the installation in the background. In this case, I have it commented out because I want you to see the installation. And we're going to walk through several different installations and uninstallations to show you how this kind of works. So I'm going to take this file and we're actually going to run it. So I'll minimize that. I'll bring up my command prompt, and we'll see if we can't uh, find the file that we want, which the command line text is setup.exe slash configure, and then the XML file. So I've got configuration one, uh, configuration demo one dot XML. And so I'll just click uh, enter here, and you'll see that the UI pops up, and it says we're getting things uh, ready. Now we'll wait a few seconds and we'll see some other information pop up. All right, now notice that the different products that are highlighted up here, we see Word, we see Excel, we see PowerPoint, we see Outlook, we see OneNote, and then OneDrive for Business. We don't see Publisher because I excluded it again. and I chose to add Skype for Business. So Skype for Business is included in this. And so it basically read that configuration file, and it's going to add the products 
in the installation as I document it. Okay. Now I'm going to pause this and we'll let it progress through the installation. I'll come back when we're about complete. Okay. Okay. We can see that the installation has completed. It says we're all set. I'll go ahead and close this and minimize the command prompt window. But just to show you what has transpired, if I click on my start menu here, you can see recently installed Skype for Business 2016. Of course, that was in the additions that we made. But if I expand my list, you'll see all of the office applications that we chose to install with the addition of uh, Skype for Business 2016. And so it has installed those. And one point of note is if you you know, uninstall a version, install a new version. Uh, just keep in mind that, you know, the profile information is still kept in the uh, user's app data folder. So even though I had uninstalled and reinstalled Office, you can see right here that uh, I have my profile up and running. So if you say, for instance, upgrade from Business Essentials or business rather to Pro Plus and you uninstall and reinstall a different version of Office, it's not going to affect that user profile. Now, let's take a look at another uh, configuration. And in this example, I want to actually remove that Office 365 business retail. And I'm just using remove, remove the product that I want to remove. And then I have commented out the display level and accept EULA. So let's go ahead and remove that so that this will happen in the background. And basically this is just obfuscating it from uh, the end user. They're not going to see it occur on their desktop. And I'll click save and then we'll run that configuration too. And I'll just modify this and we'll run that. And you can see that it's running but no UI has popped up. Now if we were to actually open up Task Manager here, you can see that the Office click to run um, process is consuming resources and it will continue to uh, increase in consuming resources going up and down uh, as it does its work in the background. So we are in fact uh, removing the product in the background, uh, but you'll note that when I chose that remove option, I didn't explicitly select Skype for Business as well. So that will remain. Okay, so we'll wait and we'll come back when this is completed. All right, so that's completed now. And if we go down here and look at our start menu, just as an indication, uh, we had all those recently added applications. And when we expanded it, we saw a whole list of the Office apps, but we've now removed them. So the only one that remains is Skype for Business. Now, this brings up an interesting point. If you didn't want to go through the process of, process of creating a, you know, customized file that would remove everything and we could very easily add Skype for Business to this much like we did when we installed it. There's a really simple and easy way to remove everything. And I've illustrated this in this remove all configuration file. So you can look at the configuration uh, XML file guidance online at the links that I've got in the blog. But if you use remove all equals true, then that actually scrubs everything. So if I were to then run this, regardless of whether it's Pro Plus, retail, individual products, or what have you, if it's a product that is covered by the Office Deployment tool for Click to Run, it will go ahead and remove it. So I'll go ahead and show you how that would work. And we'll just change this to Remove All. And I did have it happening in the background. So again, just illustrating how you can have these things removed and nothing appears to the user. And again, if we were to hop on over here, we can see that the process is running, consuming a significant amount of CPU resources in order to remove Skype for Business right now in the background. All right, so we can see that that's now completed. And if we go to our Start menu, you just saw it vanish if you were looking really carefully uh, off uh, Skype for Business 2016 is no longer installed. So that's how we remove individual products. That's how we remove everything. Let's go ahead now and actually do an installation of Office 365 Pro Plus. And what I have is this third configuration file. And you'll notice a few things different about this. So I wanted to have a local network share copy because I'm going to be deploying this, this, uh, this out to everybody in the customer environment. And and so what I did was I previously used the download switch and you could, if you put in this command, add a source path and then you put in a share name, 
and that's nothing more than this folder, uh, a share created off of this folder on my desktop, this ODT folder, uh, then when you use the slash download switch, it will download the office bits and put them in that share location. And if I just open this up, you can see here are my configuration files that I've been working with, the XML files. Here's the command line tool for the office deployment tool. And then if I look under here, this is the actual office installation data. And because I stipulated 32-bit versions in the configuration file, 32, it downloaded the 32-bit versions of Office, these cabinet files that include the installation bits. And it should be pointed out that I can now install Pro Plus or Business off of these bits, any, any version, right? Now, what that does is that it increases the speed of the installation, obviously, because now I'm getting it off of a local network share rather than uh, going out to the Office 365 service to secure that. Now, I'll go ahead and run the tool, the setup tool with, uh, with the configuration demo three. Command line using configuration D3. And notice that we have it set display level none, so it's all occurring in the background. So we've in fact removed a version of Office, removed Skype for Business separately, and now are installing Office 365 Pro Plus. So think about this as a Office 365 business install, the customer upgraded to E3, and we're doing this all without impacting the user experience at all. In fact, we can also choose to activate the subscription as well. Now, I've chose not to do that because I'm just you know demonstrating for today, but you could change that um, from being a commented out to actually auto-activate for the user to make the, the process even more seamless. So we'll wait and see when this comes back. Okay, we can see that that is completed now. And I'll go ahead and close the command prompt. And you'll notice, and I didn't kind of highlight this before, but we're installing ProPress Retail, but I excluded Publisher. And I also said, hey, we want the full-blown Skype for Business Retail. And if we now click on our Start menu, you can see recently added all apps. If we expand this, we have the wealth of Office 2016 apps here, but noticeably missing is Publisher again in this case, and we do have access now because it's part of the uh, Office 365 Pro Plus bits. So that gives you a, an indication of just how simple and easy it is to create these configuration files that can be run through um, you know, scripting, you can connect remotely using your, you know, remote management monitors or, you know, other management tools. Uh, lots of ways that these scripts could be kicked off, either automatically or by, you know, a tech. So a great way to streamline your Office 365 Pro Plus and business installations and to, you know, move people from, say, an older version to a new, newer version with very little headache or user intervention needed. Okay, thanks a lot and have a great day.